In this segment of Suffolk Headlines, we visit the Recycling Drive and Tire Amnesty Day event. Then we head over to Morgan Memorial Library for a Suffolk Speaks oral history launch. Keep Suffolk Beautiful and the Suffolk Clean Community Commission hosted a Recycling Drive and Tire Amnesty Day on Saturday, April 15th at the Lowe's parking lot on North Main Street. Suffolk citizens brought acceptable materials for the event, including tires, electronics, paper, glass, plastic bottles, batteries, and many other items. SIPSA took household hazardous waste such as paint, cleaning products, automotive products, and pesticides. On-site shredding was offered to residents as well. The event also provided an opportunity to help the Food Bank of Southeastern Virginia, which collected canned goods and other food items. I'm Wayne Jones, Litter Control Coordinator for the city. Um, this is the tire drive and recycling day that we put on. We put on two a year. Um, the next one will be on September 16th. Um, we're kindly hosted by Lowe's, uh, which is great. And we have tires um, that people are bringing in which is great so they don't end up in ditches. Um, we've got Goodwill here, we always partner with them, they're great. They take all our electronics except old TVs and mattresses. Um, we've got the Lions Club, um, they're collecting eyeglasses and hearing aids. We've got shredding, we've got regular recycling, um, we've got the food bank and we've got plenty of other information from like mosquito control, healthy Suffolk, um, events going on at the library, stuff like that. Um, and it's, it's a fun time, it's a great time to clear out your shed, get rid of the paint and the oil and household hazardous waste are here to collect all that type of stuff too. Please bring your ID because it's for Suffolk residents only. So the turnout today has been great, had a lot of people giving out a lot of information um, and we've collected loads and loads of tyres um, which is awesome. We haven't got a final count yet but it's looking really good.
The Suffolk Public Library hosted a Suffolk Speaks launch on Saturday, April 15th at the Morgan Memorial Library. This event kicked off an oral history project where citizens could share their Suffolk story. The library will be recording and collecting true stories from community members throughout the year. Guests at the launch event were able to listen to pre-recorded stories, get tips on how to best share their experiences, have the opportunity to record their own, and there were activities for children of all ages. Historian Kermit Hobbs spoke about the importance of recording local history. Right at that point, there was a slight bend in the road to the left. Not a big bend, just a little. No problem, I thought. I couldn't allow them to humiliate me. So I just thought I'd give them a casual wave with one hand, just let them know that I wasn't bothered. The problem was that as soon as I took my hand off the wheel, the car decided not to make the curve. I tried to correct, but I went right into the ditch in front of all these boys. The ball game stopped immediately, and all the guys came running over saying such comforting things as, Boy, you really put it in there, didn't you? Or, I hate to think what's going to happen to you when your dad finds out about this. <laughs> if I had a sign I'd feel, I would have taken it. This was the darkest moment in my life. I sheepishly got out, making what excuses I could, and I walked down to the farm pass close by. Mr. Harold let me, let me use his telephone to call my dad and let him know what had happened. I had the best dad in the world. He didn't get upset at all, or if he did, he didn't show it. He said he'd be right there. By the time he got there, Mr. Harold had already hooked up his tractor to the car and was pulling it out of the ditch. Praise the Lord, there was no damage beyond the few scratches that I later rubbed back with rubbing compound. I also had to call Maggie and tell her about the little incident with the car. <laughs> I had had a little incident with the car would be late into her house. I did go on to Maggie's, and we spent the rest of the afternoon playing Pollyanna with her sister and her boyfriend. I don't think I won. First of all, none of them asked any questions about my little incident. They knew, though. I could tell. Everybody knew. <laughs> Anybody guess who that was? I'm sorry. Was that you? Me. <laughs> Her name was Julia Brown. Uh, it says uh, she was interviewed in Atlanta, Georgia at, at age 85, so this would have been right in 1935. Uh, I think it said she was born around 1850. Uh, anyway, so so this is a, a, a recollection, you know, of oral history when I was a slave. I mean, it's, it's slave recollections. I mean, think, think how priceless this is to have these recollections from people who you don't have very much left, information left behind. Right. for watching this segment of Suffolk Headlines. 